When I was first diagnosed, I thought that it was basically all my fault and that it was an environmental thing and that I should be able to, you know, fix it myself. And then later, when I started going to these conferences and learning more about the disease, they came out with studies saying that there are chemical and, and biological reasons for this disease. And so that, to me, was a huge relief because, again, I felt like, oh, there really is a reason for this. It's not just because I am not dealing well with situations. It's not just because I'm not working hard enough to feel better. It's because I have chemical things wrong in my brain. Borderline personality disorder, for sure, has a predisposing biological base. And whether somebody gets the illness depends upon the environment. In that respect, it's not unlike diabetes or high blood pressure within traditional medicine. Take an interaction with another person, for example. We're, we're sitting here talking. I see your face. Well, in the brain, there's two pathways. One, you know, directly to the visual cortex that shows me the actual image of your face, so I have a mental picture of it, but also a second pathway that goes to what's called the limbic system, particularly the amygdala, so that I can assess the emotional impact of your face. And these two are integrated in terms of my appraisal of you and then, of course, my behavioral response to you. One of the most interesting findings is the finding that the amygdala, the area of the brain that signals danger and fear in borderline personality disorder, seems to be overactive. So that a face that a non-borderline person would react to in a neutral way, a borderline person may actually see as fearful. And when you talk to patients, I think what you hear is they experience other people as angry, critical, and hostile towards them, when indeed, in many instances, that may not be the other person's intent. While the amygdala, the part of the brain that signals danger, is overactive in borderline personality disorder, the prefrontal cortex, the part of the brain that's responsible for higher-order thinking, which can inhibit the behavioral response to this alarming signal seems to be underactive.